everybody. Time at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well on this Labor Day Monday here. All you guys that are still out in the grind and working, I salute you by the way. And with that being said, we're gonna get our on our grind here. So we've been talking about the tropics, of course. We talked about severe weather in recent time. The next few days are actually gonna be pretty good for severe weather. Marginal risk right now at best. Not really expecting too many upgrades there. But a big topic, and we talked about this a few times on the channel itself in recent time, is going to be this cool down that we're going to start out the month with. We're, of course, in September 2nd, and September 8th through 12th in particular is very notable because of this area right here. Look at the index here. You can pretty much put two and two together. Nearly 60% chance of below average temperatures over here towards the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as well. While on the opposite end of that, Unfortunately, over towards parts of the Northwest, Northern Rockies, we're still going to be very hot. But there is going to be some relief on the way for this area, especially as we get towards the middle of the month and beyond here. So all hope is not lost, even though you're seeing this right now. Just kind of have to bear with it for a little bit longer. And I do apologize that you do wish I could control the weather for you. But unfortunately, that's just how it is. But in any case, though, we can actually take a look at the catalyst here that's going to cause this cool down and you can see it on both the models here one reason why i haven't made updates on this every day is because a well i don't like making the same video twice and then b also there's been a lot of a uh, model disagreement here the model's been very much fluctuating as to the outcome here but now that we have the euro and the gfs in agreement here you can actually look at the bottom left corner and see the euro we're going to just put both of these in motion like so and what you'll see is, of course, this storm system coming through. Like I said, we still have marginal risk for severe weather. Nothing incredible about these, this upcoming setup here. But what you need to pay attention to is this feature right here that pops in from Canada. So this low starts to really wrap up as we get into Saturday morning. And then what ends up happening is really interesting. This almost becomes a bit of a cutoff low here. And what ends up happening, it kind of just continues to spin over towards the Great Lakes and just north of the border here. And that's what's going to allow for our cooler temperatures to sink down to the south and especially hang, or, hang around and meander over towards the northeast of Mid-Atlantic as we get into September 9th, September 10th in particular. Eventually, we do have this come out by about September 11th, heading into the 12th. And then by that point, we're going to be watching a new system come in. So this is one of the things that I was talking about in my September outlook. You can check that in the top right hand corner of that video in particular. But in that video, I said that this month does look like it could be a month where we have a lot of flip flops within the pattern. This next feature could be a great example of that. Do get a little bit of ridging once again, then we start to trough out once again. And then I do think as we get later towards the month, the chance for severe setups might start to increase and may end up becoming a thing a little bit more further to the south. I think severe weather prominence may become more notable maybe over towards Nebraska and Kansas as we get towards the end of this month right now. Of course, we're 384 hours out, so things can change pretty quickly by this point in time. But if we see a trough like this, this could be a big problem. And then look how far south that's already digging. That's unseasonably far to the south as well. So a lot that we're going to be keeping an eye on there. Now, in regards to the temperature, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to have the euro on the bottom left corner here. This is just kind of showing the level of level of model congruence or model agreement that we've had here with that system starting to come in towards the 8th and 9th here here we are now you can already see a bit of a drop in the temperature starting to occur here typically on average over towards my area for example in atlanta we have 90 degree temperatures still a thing today I have plenty of 80s and 90s up towards the northern plains right now where there's a lot of ridging going on now watch what happens as we go Tuesday, we start to see a little bit of a drop. Warm temperatures kind of move off to the east a little bit, still hot towards the southwest. But one thing that has already kind of caught my eye here is over towards the central plains where we've been dealing with those hundreds and hundreds and teens. In fact, we're starting to get into the 80s and 90s here. Welcome break for you guys. And it's only going to get better for a lot of us here. We're starting to see those hundreds even start to diminish towards the region here. We're still getting 80s and 90s in the Ohio Valley, but watch what happens as we get towards the 8th here. We're at the 6th right now. This is the 7th right here. Look at that. 
starting to see a drop off in the amount of 80 degree temperatures. Then we get towards the 8th. Look at that. We're starting to see low 80s here in the southeast. We're starting to even see 60s and 50s over here towards New York City or just to the west of New York City here at this point. So definitely getting our taste of fall here. And while the temperatures will start to warm back up a little bit, we're kind of going to be back and forth, in particular, especially across the northeast here as we go further along. You see another little cold snap start to occur here as time goes on. We start to see some hot air building out towards the middle part of the country here as time goes on. And we kind of flip-flop a little bit here. Towards the end of this model run, we're now starting to see cooler temperatures more so out towards the west, warmer temperatures out towards the east. So we've gone from a positive PNA to maybe a negative PNA. Usually when you see switches like this, sometimes it'll be it'll remain in more of a dominant pattern. That's usually what we'll see towards summertime. But seeing this flip flopping does kind of make me wonder just what could lie ahead for severe weather as we get further down the line, which is also why I'm interested in seeing what happens with that system that we saw at the end of this last map here. Now, getting into the severe weather side of things, like I said, marginal risk, nothing to really be too concerned with. Main threat, of course, damaging winds day one. Pretty much a similar deal day two. Not not much in the way of kinematics, so the tornado threat's going to remain pretty low. I think Wednesday might be the best chance for maybe a slight risk at that. Even then, I think large scale ascent, basically the um, trough here just doesn't really pack enough punch here to uh, get going here. We do have other parameters that could help this along, but as a whole here. I'm not really too concerned about severe weather. So we go through days four through eight here. You can actually look at this and see potential too low for days four through six. So we get towards seven and eight. We start to notice the predictability to low tag coming back into play. So still stuff to watch. But like I said, I don't think the potential is going to be very high for those days on seven and eight either. Now, if we go ahead and look at our overall thunderstorm view, we can actually go ahead and see that. We still have a good bit of activity over here towards the deep south. Florida in particular looks like it's going to be pretty busy over there in regards to precipitation. With this storm system, of course, coming in over towards the west here, not a surprise to see the shower and storm activity. Eventually, this, of course, will migrate off to the east here. It's really, like I said, not till Wednesday where we see something a little bit more notable over here. Of course, the Gulf Coast states are going to be shower and storm activity. Like I said, and there's also a tropical feature that's over here. While I don't have any expectation of this developing in anything, regardless of whether it would or wouldn't, shower and storm activity is going to increase because of it. Now, as we go further along here, we're going to see a little bit of a drop off in shower and storm activity. We're going to start to see a little bit more in the way of zonal flow over towards the eastern half of the U.S. So storm coverage is going to drop off. Of course, with that next system coming in, though, we're going to start to see an increase in activity again particularly towards the Southwest Rockies and the Plains here. Then eventually this activity is going to kind of retreat back to the North within this 10 day period. So could be a qu pretty quiet time for the most part over the next six to 10 days here. I think storm activity is going to decrease over time, but we still of course have to be on the lookout for severe weather. Key parameter to severe weather, by the way, of course, is the dew points, the ambient amount of moisture that we have in the air, especially towards the surface. And of course, over towards the deep south, we have plenty of it. And this is another big factor as to why we don't have that severe weather threat over towards the northern plains here. Look at the dew points in the 40s. Usually with severe weather, you, I would say the minimal number you would look for is about 55. Really, you want to be towards 60 and above. And I think this is going to be a big reason as to why it stays pretty limited. Just lack of moisture return. As time goes on, maybe towards Thursday, there could be a better chance. But I do think large scale ascent is going to limit that as well. But if we look at moisture return, all the moisture is kind of hanging out more so towards the east. After next week, though, we do start to see some attempts of moisture return begin to occur over here towards the 10th and the 11th. So we'll have to be watchful of that. And then maybe towards the 12th, we might have something cooking over here towards maybe Wisconsin, Minnesota here. It really just depends on where that low ends up setting up over time too, though. So as we go further along here, 
eventually we do start to get a little bit more in the way of moisture back towards the central plains here but it's still pretty limited i would say at this current point in time so a lot of uncertainty as we go further along here but if what i'm seeing continues with that last look that we had right there with the uh five hundred millibar map i do think the chances will eventually start to go up here of course this is just one run and we're going to probably have many we're going to have many other runs in between then and now so another factor looking at severe weather here of course instability or mixed layer cape the thing is there's actually a decent amount of instability available like i said if we had the other parameters in place i would be more concerned but of course things can uptrend pretty quickly so we still have to be watchful so we get towards the next week look at uh look at the increase that we have over here towards north dakota could be a point of interest i wouldn't expect much out of this at this current point in time as i mentioned before but over the course of the next couple of days there could be some chances here or there i think that this point they're very conditional at at best I don't see anything that's really concrete with that threat here. So the last thing to do here is to really take a final look at what could lie ahead here with our precipitation. Like I said, shower and storm activity is going to start to diminish over time here. Like I said, southeast could be a factor as we get into the end of the week here. We see that feature come in. We see shower and storm activity again towards the mid-Atlantic northeast. And as that low spins off to Canada, we start to lose some of that shower storm activity. And then things start to get pretty quiet as we get towards the 8th and to the 10th. Then after that, we do start to see a little bit of a resurgence here, mainly out towards the west. And this is where we start to get that big pattern shift here, where we start to shift from a positive PNA to the negative PNA. So it's going to be a little bit cooler out towards the west. And interestingly enough, towards far southern Canada, we're even starting to see uh, evidence of snow here and there based off model data here. And I've been seeing that the past couple of runs. You can even start to see it all the way into Nevada now, which is interesting. I mean, like I said, though, if that low at the end of this run comes in, like I think it might, especially with it being at this pressure here, 999 millibars and dropping potentially, that isn't out of the question, if I'm being honest. So, like I said, some major changes are on the way here, folks. So you might want to consider getting the sweater out. I won't say that it's a guarantee after the six to 10 day mark, but if you're out here to the east and you're expecting summer, you might be sadly mistaken. But that being said though, we'll just have to take it one day at a time and get there. So until next time, I'll have another update video for you then. It's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and have an awesome rest of your Labor Day.